Hey, hey, you guys. Today, we are going to be talking about the age-old topic of setting and reading cookies inside of Google Tag Manager. I'm going to show you some, some a few cool things that you can do with that. So first of all, we're going to hop in right into our Google Tag Manager, and we are going to start looking at how we can do a few things. Like one, let's just set a cookie, any cookie, and then let's add on some cool cookie and tags and reading cookies and overriding cookies and uh, maybe we'll do like the the last blog post viewed type um, type of trigger. So um, to to start, like let's just start with AI because that's what everyone does. So show me how to set a cookie using Google Tag Manager inside a custom HTML tag. So let us let loose on the old AI stuff and um, let's see what it comes up with. So it's spitting out some JavaScript that we can add. Now that that is there, let's copy the code and let's come back, create a new custom HTML tag, custom HTML, paste that in, paste that in, and let's call this uh, 111, so it appears at the top, uh, A, A111, set cookie, and let's, Let's just fire this baby on all pages. So what I expect is a cookie name called my cookie name to be set with a cookie, uh, the value called my cookie value, and it is going to expire at some time. It's going to expire in 30 days. So let's go check it out. Let's preview this. Let's go to our test website here, and let's check the cookies. So we're going to go application. Zoom in a bit for the people in the back. And let's check my cookie name. Boom, there it is. We have a cookie called my cookie name with a value of my cookie value. And the expiration, let's see if we can get the expiration here. Should be 30 days from now, 412. It is currently, th uh, that's, that's a month, that's it. Boom, good to go. We are rocking and rolling. All right, so now we can use this method to set a cookie. Alternatively, like there's other ways. You just Google how to set and read cookies in GTM. Click on the top link. Allow cookies, because we are talking about cookies. We're going to allow cookies. Here we go. Um, here's some fun cookie stuff. Let's count example firing. Let's see, do they have just the generic that I skipped too far? Just generic set a cookie. Okay, here we go. Test this one. Let's go A, A22, set cookie. So this is using from that website. And we'll just go fire this on all pages. So visitor from Google Ads and true. That's the value we should see. Let's go check it out. Let's preview this. Da, 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 da. All right, check our cookies here. So it should be called visitor from Google Ads. And there we go. It is set to true. So boom, bada bam, also has the 30 day method. There's two super easy ways to set cookies. Now let's go modify these. Uh, so let's say we want to, on our page here, we have, I think there's a blog somewhere. Uh, I think there's a blog somewhere. Here we go. We click on this, we're gonna have a blog. Okay, we've got a blog article here. The good old hello world uh, blog post, super important to go ahead and read this. Uh, but let's say we want to capture whenever someone views a blog, we want to set a cookie of the last blog that they viewed. So I, would, I want to see a cookie over here called last blog viewed, and I want it to have the title of my blog or the page we could choose actually. So a few ways to get this done. One is we could do it based on the URL. So we could say whenever there's a category name and then um, a page, we could use that. Because I'm on WordPress, we could also use the data layer variable that says what the page type is. So if the page type is a, pay, a post, then we could use that as the condition, which I think is what we're going to do in this case. So what that looks like is if we come over here to our container loaded, we go under the different data layer events over here, we can actually see message, the very first one, which has uh, stuff here. So we can see that the page post type has a, uh, a value of post. So that's what we can use. Let's see if we have page post type already as a variable, page post type. We do. So we already have our data layer variable for page post type. Let's go take a look at that. Page post type, that's kind of fun to say. Page post type, page post type, there it is. Page post type, 
uh, just like that data layer variable page post type. Okay, let's see what we want to do then is create a trigger based on the post type. So is it a post page post type of post is what we want. So we're going to go ahead and create a new trigger here. We're going to say it is going to happen on page view when the page post type page post type. Uh, you really got to try saying it fun fast DLV page post type DLV page post type equals post and is it capital that's important no it's lowercase post okay so let's call this our page view uh, 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 page is a post post pages post posts page page view of posts post post pages page view, page post type of post pages. Here we go. Uh, next thing we're gonna do is duplicate our set cookie one here, and it doesn't matter which one we use, they both worked. So let's go ahead and copy this. Let's call this uh, set cookie, uh, set cookie last blog viewed. Okay, this is good, this is good. We don't wanna fire this on all pages. We do only want this to fire on certain pages. So we want this to fire on our page view of post pages. There we go. And now we need a uh, cookie name and a cookie value. So the cookie name, we're just gonna call last blog, last blog viewed. There we go. And the value, uh, let's put in here like the page title, page title, is that a, is that a good page post? Let's do page page path, page URL. We say, okay, so we don't have page title. We could do the page path, but I kind of want the post the post title. So let's see if post title is already a thing. Nope, just page post type. All right, so let's go create our page, uh, our post title variable. So we're gonna check over here. Do we have in this fun data layer, do we have a post title? Post, post title, video title. Nope, we don't have a post title. So in order to do that, then what we can do is look at the page title. Uh, page title is not currently in one of our variables. Let's go see if it is a default variable. Is it a built-in variable? Let's come down here to our page variables. Ah, here they are at the top. Page, okay, so page title is not a variable. So we are going to need to create a new variable that will grab our page title. And guess what? I'm not gonna think of how to do that. Let's just ask AI. Uh, write a custom JavaScript variable that will extract the post title. And probably the plugin I'm using could push that post title into the data layer, but let's just go this way. <laughs> okay, this because it has other context, I think it it messed up. So this is I don't I don't think this is gonna work. Post title. Uh, let's stop this. Let's go new chat. Okay, write a custom JavaScript function that will grab the title of the page in Google Tag Manager. But it says over here, document.title. See, I was I was close. I was onto something. Uh, there we go. So let's come under variables. Let's create a new variable. Let's go here. This is a custom JavaScript variable for the document. Uh, we'll just call it page title. Page, page title. Yeah, there we go. It is a custom JavaScript variable, uh, and it's going to return the document.title. So let's go ahead and preview this. And check it out. So at our page view event, let's see our custom JavaScript page title. It did indeed come up with the title of the page. I uh, should have done a dash there instead of an equal sign, but that is a-okay and no one is gonna talk about that. So two things we're testing now is, uh, well, one, now that we're on this page, let's see if we can get uh, the page title correctly. Choose our new thing, okay, here we go. That is our new page title that we're gonna use. So inside of our cookie variable, we are going to set the last blog viewed as the new custom JavaScript page title uh, variable right there. Okay, let's go ahead and hit save and preview this one more time to double check that it is all working fine and dandy, okay. So we're on our page. We got to come down to the blog. 
So here on this container loaded, we should now have our set cookie, the A22. So set cookie because we're setting the last blog post viewed cookie. Uh, and the values here, it's not going to tell us, but let's go actually check the cookies. So we're going to go application, core scale, and last blog viewed. There we go. Let's make this bigger. Actually, let's just move it down here. Now make it smaller. No, bigger. Ah, here we go. It's right there. Boom. Last bug viewed, and this is the value of that cookie. Okay, so we are cooking. We're able to set cookies. We're able to set cookies based on conditions inside of Tag Manager using different triggers. Okay, so if you're interested in us helping you at all in any way, shape, or form with your measurement, head on over to visionlabs.com and uh, we'll, we'll help you. We'll be able to strategize with you and make sure that your measurement system is up and running and everything is looking good. And um, go ahead and just come and hit contact. Come schedule a call. We'll chat. We'll talk about strategy, data strategy, make sure everything is good for you and help you get the best measurement for your buck. So there you go. Little plug uh, over there. Go ahead and schedule a call. The next thing we're going to do is now use that cookie value inside of our tags. So let's go to variables. Let's choose our variable here. Uh, we're going to create a new variable. It's going to be a first party cookie variable. So first party cookie one PC dash uh, last blog viewed because that is the cookie we want to be able to reference. So we're going to go first party cookie for the last blog viewed. Go ahead and hit save. And once again, we are going to preview this. And immediately, because it's set in a cookie on this page, we should be able to read that value of the last blog viewed. So first PC, last blog viewed, we do indeed have our value of our cookie set right there. So that is looking good. Things are looking good. So, no, so now what do we do with that? What do we put with that cookie value into to make it useful? Well, we can do that right here in our good old config. So we come to the config, we've got our configuration settings, we can come in and add a parameter and call this last blog viewed and reference our first party cookie for last blog viewed just like that. And now we'll be sending the last blog viewed to all of the different events. Now, maybe we didn't want to do that. Maybe we only want to do that actually on like lead events or sale events or something like that. Totally can modify it, although it doesn't matter too much. Uh, this will just make it apply to all events. So every event is going to have the last blog viewed um, set right there. Okay. Um, yeah, the next thing, like other, other use cases that you can do, let's definitely go and check out uh, Vision Labs. So here, if we go ahead and look at the cookies that we have, so make sure we're selecting our different cookies, we have these underscore VL or VL underscore cookies, which can track a lot more stuff. So here we have, uh, it's tracking the landing page. The landing page, the first page I landed on was um, this V, like this, this page. So VL landing page, so Vision Labs landing page, we prefix the cookies with VL just so they don't conflict with anything else. Um, and then what happened if, what would happen if I, um, what would happen if I had UTM parameters? So let's say UTM source equals Stockton one and UTM medium equals Stockton two. So we can go ahead and do that. And look at that, our VL UTM source uh, and medium now show up. And so what happens if I change this? Let's go instead of UTM source being stocked in one, let's go stocked in three. And here let's go stocked in four. So we'll go ahead and hit enter. And lo and behold, those values did not update. So this is a good way you can use cookies to actually track UTMs um, and say, what was the original UTM that someone had store that in a cookie and then reference that later. Uh, in their different tags, triggers, and variables. So this is what would happen. We're, we're keeping track and we're saying if that cookie already exists, so remember, uh, so use the first party cookie variable and say if this if there is a value here, don't set it. Only set it if there's new values um, values there. But uh, just to kind of showcase all of the different possibilities and things that you can actually do with cookies. If you want to track the last page someone viewed, if you want to track the original landing page they came from, 
uh, or their source in Medium, like any of the UTMs, you could store your own version of like click IDs or things like that. And everything would live inside of a cookie and you control the expiration date and all of those uh, things like that. So there it is, quick little intro uh, story, there's video, there we go, on how to set cookies, read cookies, and how to use them inside of your different tags.